So the next type of bar diagram we'll be looking at is the deviation bar, bar diagram. And deviation bar diagram are usually used to represent net excesses and net deficits. And this illustration just shows that represents the income and export trade of two countries. And this is the year exports and imports. For any country that the exports is more than the import, it means we have excess. And that is why I've put plus here. And for any country where the import is more than the exports, it means we have deficit minus. We have a deficit. So I'm just going to do the two the two illustrations now. So for the first one, our, imp our export is 45. 45 minus 25, what do we have? That is 20. So it means we have a a, 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 a surplus of 20. For the second year, we have 110 minus 95. 110 minus 95. That will give us 15. It's also a surplus of 15. Then for the next year, we have 80 and 100. Because the import is more than the export, it is a deficit. So 100 minus 80 will give us, the value will give us minus 20 or a deficit of 20. Then the next one says 30, 130 and 140. The import is greater than the export. So we have a deficit. This is dash and we have a deficit of 10. Yeah. Then the last one says 150 and 190. The import is greater than the export. So we have a deficit, a deficit of 40. We have a deficit of 40. How do we represent this information on a deviation bar diagram? Just watch as I do. So the first thing is to write out a suitable title for the bar diagram. So my title will be Import and Export Trade of Two Countries. Import. Import. And export trade of two countries of two countries between 2010 and 2015 between 2010 to 2015 any suitable title is okay for some other people, they might decide to add import and export trade of two countries, depending on how suitable it is for you. So I'm going to draw the two axes now. We have X axis, we have X axis, and we have Y axis. But because this is a deviation bar diagram, it doesn't completely turn out like this. So I'm going to withdraw. I'm going to withdraw what I just did now. I'm going to withdraw what I just did. It's still the Y axis. Is still the y-axis that goes straight down and the x-axis starts from this point is still the x-axis and our point of origin starts from this point representing this on i want to draw out a scale now from my balance of trade for the positive i have 15 and i have 20 so my scale can be 5 so i can say 5 10 15 then 20 then for my deficits i also have the same Sorry, I'm not going to use 5 because of my deficit. So I'm going to use 10 as my scale. You can decide to use any scale. But because of my own space, I, I've decided to use 10. So I'm saying 10 and 20. Multiple of 10. If it's 2, multiple of 2. If it's 5, multiples of 5. So for the deficit now, down. This is positive and this is deficit. Meaning minus. So I'm still going to use 10. So minus 10, 20. 30 and 40. So how do I draw out my deviation diagram? Don't forget that the years are always represented on the x-axis. But before I represent the year on the x-axis, let me draw one or two of the, of the deviation bar diagram. So the first one says 2010-2011. And I have the balance of trade is a surplus. So that is 20. So I come here and represent 2010-2011. 2010-2011, I have a surplus of 20. 2010-2011, I have a surplus of 20. For 2011-2012, I have a surplus of 15. So I also come 10, so 15 will be between 10 and 20. So for 2011-2012, 20, 
I have a surplus of 15. So 15 will be somewhere around this point. 15 will be somewhere around this point. I have a surplus of 15 for 2011, 2012. For, but for 2012, 2013, I have a deficit of 20. Since I have the deficit, the graph comes down. So this will be 2012, 2013. And I have a deficit of what? 20. I have a deficit of 20. So I, I bring the gra graph down to 20. I bring the graph down to 20. And I draw. I bring the graph down to 20. And I draw. Then for 2013, 2014, I have a deficit of 10. 2013, 2013, 2014, a deficit of 10. So I also draw the graph which to reach 10. So I say, I come here and put, this is not straight. I come here and put 10. I write 10. Then for the last year, which is 2014, 2015, is also a deficit of 40. I, do, I work out the same process, 2014, 2015, and a deficit of 40. So my graph still comes down to 40. My graph still comes down to 40. A deficit of 40. So this is what we call a deviation bar diagram. And like I said earlier, it's a kind of diagram where we represent net excesses and net deficit of maybe balance of trade of countries comparing, comparing countries to one another. And we have just shown an example. The last series on the one dimensional diagram is the broken bar diagram and the broken bar diagrams are used to represent values where there are wide variation of figures and this is an illustration that says represent in a broken bar diagram so the first thing is to give it a suitable title i go ahead and say representing groups of students 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 then also the y axis and the x axis so the x axis is on this side my starting point the point of origin is here then the y axis is on this part then looking at the numbers of students that we have the first one group a is 60 so i come on the x axis and a b c d so for x axis, for the y axis now, the highest value I'm having is 480. So I'm going to circle it out, which is D. I'm, I'm not going to talk about it for now. Then the next available value that is bigger is 120. I have 45. I have 60. So what would be my scale? What would be my scale? My scale, let's say 20. I'm using 20 to be my scale. You can use 5 if your book is big enough. 10 but i'm going to use 20 or 40 20 or 40 because the list i have here is 60 or 45 so i can decide to use 20 or 40 so i'm going to use 20 so zero the next point will be 20 40 60 80 100 and 120 and for a for group A, I have 60, so I'm going to draw a bar diagram to 60 now. I'm going to draw a bar diagram to 60. I'm going to draw a bar diagram to 60. I'm going to draw a bar diagram to 60. Then for B, I have 45. 45 will be slightly above 40. For B, I have 45. For C, I have 120. So I'm going to draw up to 120 for C now. I'm going to draw up to... 120 for C. For C, I have 120. For C, I have 120. For D is 480. But I'm still going to stop at 120 so that I can explain what that means. I can explain what it means. Then for E, I have 80. So I'm going to draw out, <coughs> excuse me, 80. So 80 for E now. <coughs> excuse me. For E, <coughs> excuse me. Why do I why do we call it broken bar diagrams? Don't forget that I've not represented what D is completely. D is 480. So 120 plus 480. What do I have? That's zero. 
600. So it means there is a 480 fraction that is not represented on the buoyant. We call it broken bar diagram because I can simply represent the remaining 480 and write 480 here. So we call it broken bar diagram because the bars can be broken to, to accommodate large varieties of figure. The difference between 120 and 180 is very large. For example, if I should continue my scale, from 120, I have 140, 160, 180, 200, 220, 240. That would be so large that my book might not contain it sometimes. So, but for it to be easy, I've just broken the bar and I've represented it by 480. So anybody that is saying this bar means that to this point is 120, and the remaining bars of, on top of that 120 is 480. 480 plus 120 that I've done on the board. Is 600 so the deviation bar diagram is 120 plus the 480 that is remaining thank you like I was explaining what the bar diagram broken bar diagram is I represented a B C and D because C is D is 480 what I have to do is subtract 480 minus 120 that is still 60 so it means the many the remaining broken bar diagram here is 360, 360, and this is 120. So 120 plus 360 will give me 480. Okay, so the next types of diagram we'll be talking about, we have talked about one-dimensional diagram, and we said one-dimensional diagram, it is only the length of the diagrams that are important, and the length could be in vertical or horizontal. Then. We also have two-dimensional diagram, and two-dimensional diagram can also be called a surface diagram or an area diagram. And for two-dimensional diagram, two things are important. The length and the width of the diagrams are of paramount importance. And what are the examples? We have rectangles, we have square, we have circles, then we have a par diagram. I'll talk about a par diagram in a minute. Then. We also have three-dimensional diagram. Three-dimensional diagram can also be called volume diagrams. And three, there are three, three things that are important in three-dimensional diagram. We have the length, the width, and the height of the diagrams are put into consideration. What are the examples? We have cubes, we have cylinder, and we have we have blocks. This is supposed to be blocks, not height. Blocks. I'm going to rewrite. They are supposed to be blocks. We have blocks. Examples of three-dimensional diagram cubes cylinder and blocks. So I'm going to explain what a par diagram is now Okay, so the next type of diagram we'll look at now is called the par diagram And why do we call it par diagram because it looks like a pie and all the entire components resembles slices cut from a pie so we want to represent this information on a par diagram. So it represents the figure of the cost of building in a par chart. And the item, cement, steel, bricks, tin, labor and miscellaneous expenses. And these are the expenses in percentage. The first expenses is 20%, 18%, 10%, 15%, 25%, 25% and 12%. Because it's in percentage, we assume automatically that the total of this value is 100. Even if you try to add up, it's still 100. 20 plus 18 is 30, plus 20, that's 50. 50 plus 10, 60. 60 plus 40 is 100. So because it is a pie chart, the, the, the circle of that pie, the total degree of that circle, like we were taught in secondary school or primary school, that that, that, that circle represents 360 degrees. And because it represents 360 degrees, I want to convert this into degrees. And what do I do? 20 divided by 100 times 360 degree, we have 72 degree. 18 divided by 100 times 360, we have 68.8 degree. 10 divided by 100 times 360, we have 36 degree. Then 15 divided by 100 times 360, we have 54 degree. Then 25 divided by 100 times 360, we have 90. Then 12 divided by 100 times 360, we have 43.5. So I'm going to draw the pi diagram or the pie chart. It's just a circle. It's just a circle. You can decide to use any format. 
you can decide to use any format and for for it to be easier if 360 divided into four places that will give us 90 so i'm going just going to divide into four places so it will be easier for me to allocate the values or the figure the first one that is 90 is label so automatically this becomes 90 degrees 90 degrees 90 degrees and it is represented with what label that's easier then any do we have another one that is close to 90 no we don't have the other one that is close to 90 is 72 so i'm going to assume that 72 degrees is somewhere around this place 72 degrees is somewhere around this place so i write 72 degrees and i write cement 72 degrees and i write cement then, then i'm going to clean off this part i'm going to clean off this part to know 90 minus 72 i still have 18 18 plus this 19 so i want to i want to look at this now this is 68.8 don't forget at this point i still have 18 so 18 Point eight. So the only figure I'm going to remove from this 90 will be 50. So I assume that this will give me 68.8 degrees, which is what still 68.8 degree, which is still. If you are drawing to your notes, it should be more accurate than drawing it on the board because I'm drawing it on the board. That is why I'm not getting a perfect shape. I've done for 72. I've done for 68.8. Then the next value I have is 43. I have 54 and I have 36 so I'm going to draw out the 54 now I'm going to draw out the 54 the 54 should give me around this point 54 54.0 which is what timber 54.0 which is timber 54.0 this is too large so I'm going to withdraw to be around this point 54.0 which is timber then the last the two other ones that I've not represented is miscellaneous and bricks which is 36 and 43 so I take this to be 36 degrees which is bricks which is bricks and the last one to be what the last one to be 43.5 which is miscellaneous expenses which is miscellaneous expenses this is just a sketch I'm sure once I put my compass or my protector on this it won't be correct but because it is a board but if we are drawing it on the notes I, I want us to be more accurate and draw it exactly the way it should go another set of diagram we'll be looking at or types of diagram we'll be looking at are pictogram and cartogram and what are pictograms they are picture representation of statistical data and they are usually used to represent pictorial symbols that are carefully selected this is an illustration that shows represent the following data in a pictogram and it says number of female employees in complete z the year 2016 2017 2018 number of female employees 1000 3000 10000 to make this very easy i'm going to represent a thousand employee by picture so it means i'm going to divide each of these employees by 1000 divided by 1000 so if i'm dividing 1000 by 1000 Will give me what one three thousand by three, one thousand it will give me three pictures and ten thousand divided by one thousand i'll have ten so i'm going to represent it on the board now number of female employees in complete z so my title number or numbers numbers number or number of female of female employees number of female employees employees in company company z that is my topic that is my topic and don't forget i'm not going to draw the y axis or the x axis. this is a different form of representing statistical data and it is in picture for 2016 for example for 2016 i have just one candidate because i've simplified by dividing each of the each of the year by a thousand photo 2016 it means wherever you see one picture it means multiply by one thousand that means a thousand picture then for 2017 it means i'm going to draw out three pictures to represent the entire data and for 2018 
ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. This looks like Fumbi, Glory, and some other people I don't want to mention their names. So I've just represented the number of female employees in Compiz for 2016, 2017, and 2018. For the cartogram, is a little bit advanced compared to the pictogram, but usually the cartogram are used to give quantitative information on geographical basis. It, you can decide to show the rainfall in a particular country over a period of time or within a, a year or like that. You might decide to show the maybe 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 plantations in Nigeria, cocoa research institute in Nigeria or plantation. Now, all what we have said since are diagrams. Now we are going to graph analysis and one of the many graphs that we'll be looking at is graph of frequency distribution. And when we talk about graph of frequency distribution, we have histogram, we have frequency polygon, we have forgive or the cumulative curve. So the first graph of frequency distribution we'll be looking at is called histogram and they are set of vertical bars whose area are proportional to the frequency represented. The illustration says represent this in histogram rather and these are the max and frequency. I'm going to represent it is slightly different from bar diagrams. Histogram are slightly different from bar diagrams. I'm going to represent it on histogram now. Don't forget we have x axis and we have y axis. Don't forget we should give it a suitable title. So marks of student represented on Instagram. Histogram. Marks. Marks of students represented on Instagram. And this is my point of origin, the starting point. Don't forget the max. I have looking at the max 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, then 70. Then looking at the frequency, what is the least frequency? 1. What is the highest? 48. So I can use 5, I can use 10, but let me use 5 so that. That will be up to 50. 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, then 50. My scale is 5. Don't forget, if you are starting with 5, it will be multiple of 5. You add 5 to the next one, add 5. You are starting with 2, you add 2 to the next one. Two to the next one and like that so representing this on histogram for a bar chart the bars does not touch the lines for a bar chart or the bars you don't you don't touch the the starting point with the line with the with the graph with the bars rather but for e histogram from what the question says 0 to 10 10 to 20 20 to 30 30 to 40 40 to 50 50 to 60 and 60 to 70 Starting from the original, the first mark is 10 and the value of 10, the frequency is what? 5. So starting from the origin, I'm going to draw 5 like this. The first one is 10, 0 to 10. So my mark from 0 to 10 is what? 5. Then 10 to 20 is 12. So I come here and join up to 12 and still mark. So. Ten to twenty is twelve. Twenty to thirty is twenty-five. So coming here, twenty to thirty. Twenty to thirty is twenty-five. So coming to where twenty-five is, I mark out twenty-five. So this represents thirty. Thirty. Then the next one says thirty to forty is forty-eight. Thirty to thirty to forty is forty-eight. Thirty to forty. Is 48 30 to 40 so this is 40 
is 48 30 to 40 then the next one says 40 to 50 is 32 40 to 50 is 32 coming to where 32 is the point where 32 is so i write 50 then the next one says 50 to 60 is 6 50 to 60 is 6 6 will be around this point so i mark down and write 60 then the last one says 60 to 70 is 1 60 to 70 is 1 60 to 70 is 1 so i write 70 here. sorry 70 here. and that completes that gives me my histogram marks of student represented on histogram so don't forget that the bars are attached together compared to that of bar diagrams the bar diagrams are not are not attached together for histogram the bars are attached together okay the next graph of frequency distribution graph of frequency distribution we'll be looking at is the frequency polygon and we can achieve frequency polygon in two ways the first one is to draw histogram and mark out the midpoint on the bars and draw a straight line that joins draw a mark that joins all a straight line that joins all the bars together or we find the midpoint of and plot the frequency corresponding to each of the bars but i'm going to choose the first one and the first one say draw histogram and mark out the midpoint on the bars and use a straight line to join it so these are the midpoints these are the midpoints these are the midpoints 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 i want to join all these points with a straight line I want to join all these points with a straight line. I want to join all these points with a straight line. I want to join all these points. This is what is called a frequency polygon. A frequency polygon. If we use the second method too, we we'll still get the same thing. It means take the midpoint and plot the frequency corresponding to each of the points. To get the midpoint, to get our midpoint on this on this table. To get our midpoint would be would be 0 plus 10 divided by 2. That's 5. 10 plus 20 divided by 2, 15. The next one will be 25, 35, 45, 55, then 65. If we decide to use the midpoint, we still get something like this. The last graph of frequency distribution that we'll be looking at today is called cumulative frequency curve or OGIF. And what do we mean? By cumulative frequency curve this is this curve is obtained by plotting the cumulative frequencies together and basically it can be achieved through two through two method the first method is less than method and when we use the less than method we start with the upper class limit then the second method is the more than method and when we use the more than method we start with the lower class limit this is an example on the board illustration three says marks of student we have 10 to 20 20 to 30 30 to 40 40 to 50 50 to 60 and 60 to 70 and this is the frequency 4 6 10 20 18 and 2 then for the less than method less than method we start with the upper class limit the upper class limit here is 20 30 40 50 60 and 70 and what do we do we start adding from the first value the first value will be added to zero so four plus zero will give us four the next value because it is cumulative the next value will be four plus six will give us ten ten plus ten will give us twenty twenty plus twenty will give us forty forty plus eighteen will give us fifty eight and fifty eight plus two will give us sixty that is the less than method and we use the upper class limit for the more than method we use the lower class limit and using the lower class limit we have the first lower class limit is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. But 70 will still be included in this class. And what do we do? We start deducting the, the, the total, which is 60. We start deducting the values, the frequency from it gradually. So the total is 60. 60 minus 4 will give us 56. 56 minus 6 will give us 50. 50 minus 10 will give us 40. 40 minus 20 will give us 20. 20 minus 18 will give us 2. Then 2 minus 2 will give us 0. So I'm going to draw the OGIF less than method on the board. So looking at the less than method, I've, I've drawn it on the x-axis and this is 
my y axis x axis and the y axis so i'm just going to put the mark so that i can get the graph okay looking at the less than method the first value is 20 the first um, upper class limit is 20 and 20 my cumulative is 4 so looking at this value the highest is 60 and the least is 4 what would be my scale i can decide to use 5 i can decide to use 10 so to make my work easy i'm going to use 10 20 30 40 50 then 60 so the first cumulative value is 4 so 20 and 4 4 should be around this point i point it out then the next one is 10 the next one is 10 10 should be around this point the next one is 20 20 should be around this point 20 the next one is 40 the next one is 40 the, it means 50 is equal to 40 then the next one is 58 58 the next one is 58 the next one is 58 and the last one is 60 the last one is 60 the last one is 60 so I will just draw a straight line across all the points that I've drawn on the board. A straight line across all the points I've drawn on the board. This represents an OGIF less than method. The next method I'll be showing is the OGIF more than method. 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 More than method. Looking at the OGIV modern method, I see I have the same representation 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and they are about then for my cumulative now. This is the only thing that will, that will change. My point, my scale is still 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. So starting from the first one, 10, 10, what do I have? 10 is 60, so I mark at this point. Then the next one is 20 and it's 56. 20 is 56. I mark at this point. The next one is 30 and it says 50. 30 and it is 50. I mark at this point. Then the next one is 40 and it is 40. 40 and 40. I mark out at this point. Then the next one is 50 and it is 20. 50 and it is 20. I mark out at this point. The next one is 60 and it is 2. 60 and it is 2. 2 should be around this point. Then the last one is 70 and it is zero. Zero will be on this point. So I just draw a line across all the points. 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 We have come to the end of today's lecture. I'm sure that you all enjoyed today's class. Please kindly subscribe. Turn on your notification button so that you know when new videos are being added. Thank you and God bless you all.